that's going, and here comes the music. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of America F1 from rainy San Francisco. We have a seismic weather going on here. It's been raining for the last couple days, but we got a lot of news in Formula One from this last week. I mean, a lot. And of course, one big one. So let's let's unpack it. But before we get into that, you know, Mike's in um, Thailand on vacation. And so we got our uh, special guest, PJ, uh, in for the day. Say hello, everybody, PJ. Yo, what's going on, everybody? And... I just want to remind everybody, let's get away, let's get into our, our business that we have to do. Um, you know, we're an underground channel, we're not mainstream, which means we're not controlled by the corporate overlords. You know, they're not telling us what to say and what to do. And we, we really can dive in to Formula One, the news, and to all the fans out there. So we want you to know that first off. So we. We really rely on you liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel um, because we do it for the fans, and there's no other reason why we do it. So, PJ, the biggest yep. news of the year, the biggest news of even last season is Lewis Hamilton moving to Ferrari. Uh, we talked about it a little bit on when it broke. We had a flash show talking about the move, but now that it's happened, now that we've had a couple days to reflect and more news is coming out, what's your first reaction when you heard the news? Well, I'm not a Lewis fan like you are. I still like Lewis, but I'm a Carlos Sainz fan first, so it was... For me, disappointing because I wanted to see Carlos continue with Ferrari. So, but I think now going to Audi is his best his best option. Um, you know, I think Carlos is going to have a lot of offers now because there's, because as they say, when one big domino falls, a lot of other dominoes fall. You know, all the other small dominoes are going to start to fall. So I think he's going to have a lot of offers. It's not just going to be him going to the Audi project. You know, he could go to Mercedes. He could go to Aston Martin if Fernando Alonso moves. We can talk about all those moves later on in the show. But let's get right into the quotes of what one Sir Lewis Hamilton have to say about moving to Ferrari. This is Lewis Hamilton, or so Lewis Hamilton, and I'm getting this red microphone so I can feel like I'm actually like on the location with Sir Lewis Hamilton. It's been a crazy few days which have been filled with a whole range of emotions. But as you all know, after an incredible 11 years at Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team, it'll be 12 years this year which will be the longest of any Formula One driver with one team Eclipsing him, he was tied with Schumacher for 11 years, but this will be his 12th year. The time has come for me to start a new chapter in my life, and I'll be joining the Scuderia Ferrari in 2025. I feel incredibly fortunate after achieving things with Mercedes that I could have only dreamed about as a kid, and now I have the chance to fulfill another childhood dream, driving in Ferrari Red. Mercedes has been a huge part of my life since I was 13 years old, so this decision has been the hardest I've ever had to make. I'm incredibly proud of all we've achieved together, and I'm very grateful for the hard work and dedication of everyone i worked with over the years, and of course, Toto, for his friendship and guidance and leadership. Together, we have won titles, broken records, and become the most successful driver team partnership in F1 history. And of course, I cannot forget Nikki who was a huge supporter and who I will miss every day 
even today. I must also share my huge appreciation for the whole Mercedes-Benz board and everyone at the company in Germany and around the world for supporting me for these 26 years. But the time is right to make the change and take a new on a new challenge. I still remember the feeling of taking a leap of faith into the unknown when I first joined Mercedes in 2013. Now I know some people don't or didn't understand it at the time, but I was right to make the move. And then the feeling I have again, I'm feeling it now. I'm excited to see what I can bring to this new opportunity and what we can do together. Now, PJ, do you have a quote from uh, Total Wolf's quote reaction to Lewis Hamilton's quote? No, but I have Carlos Sainz's quote. Okay, let's hear what Carlos had to say. Right. All right. So Carlos said, this is the day after everything was announced. He said, following today's news, Scuderia, Ferrari, and myself will part ways at the end of 2024. We still have a long season ahead of us. And like always, I will give my absolute best for the team and for for the Tifosi around the world. News about my future will be announced in due course. That's from Carlos Sainz. And Nigel Manson speaks about Lewis Hamilton's move to Ferrari. He said, people are saying that Lewis is now too old at 39. No, I won my championship at 39. And I've, I could have gone on. But Lewis, if he's motivated, he's got several, if not a lot more years left. I think it's just fantastic. Now, remember, everybody, that Fernando's 41 going on 42. I think he's 42 now. And he's still fast. He's still quick and he's still motivated. I think for Lewis, he's probably gone on and finished his career with Ferrari. It's like a dream come true for him. I would imagine because going to Ferrari is everything. Now, one Gehad Berger on Lewis Hamilton and the Ferrari deal. I have to congratulate Ferrari. Hiring Hamilton seems to me to be the best possible decision. Sometimes an energetic change is necessary within a working group. I am convinced that with Lewis's new skills, new engineers, a new way of making decisions will come to fruition. We're talking about the most important and consistent character in modern F1 in terms of results, but also in fan following. Lewis is a reference for a huge community, which also includes people who are not only interested in motorsports, This puts him in a different position to other drivers. If we combine all this with the Ferrari brand, it also means generating real power in financial terms. What do you think of those quotes, PJ? Well, I feel like Lewis probably could go as long, if not longer than Fernando in terms of like, you know, having pace up until his forties. Cause like, Fernando is, yeah, like I said, 42, and he's still, like, just as fast as he ever ever was. I feel like Lewis has that motivation, like Fernando, to keep going well into his 40s. Yeah, I agree. And I, I see, even Michael Jackson agrees. Yeah. Well, that's not Michael Jackson. What, what, what happened to Michael Jackson agreeing with you? Yeah, yeah. There you go, yeah, Mike. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, Total Wolf. He had a video response to all this, which we'll put up right here. We'll put up right here so you can. We resigned the contract with uh, Lewis. We opted for um, shorter term. And um, so the events are not a surprise, maybe the timing. So what happened is that we we uh, got together um, for coffee in my place in Oxford and uh, him returning, um, basically him returning to the factory. And uh, he said to me that he has decided to race for Ferrari in 2025. And uh, that was that was basically it. And we had a, a good hour of conversation. Um, and uh, yeah, th- th- this is where we are. I'm mad at you. You said you're not a Ferrari fan. Everybody's a Ferrari fan. Even if they're not, they are a Ferrari fan. Even if you go to the Mercedes guys, even if they say... Two of the younger, more promising drivers on the grid. And so I think, and this is just hypothesis, and I want to ask what you think, PJ. 
But I think Lewis knew he was going to Ferrari ahead of time. Because remember last year, at the summer break, here on America F1, we told you that he had been offered $40 million to go to Ferrari by Fred Vassar. He had offered him $40 million to go. And we said on this show that he should go because why not? It's the perfect end to a trilogy. You have a beginning and a middle and an end. It's a storybook ending. Everybody, everybody wants to go to Ferrari. Why? Because it's the red car. Because it's iconic. Because it is. When you think of Formula One, you think of Ferrari. So he knew ahead of time in his mind that he was going to go to Ferrari. And then on the contract, PJ... When Mercedes offered him a one-in-one contract with no ambassadorship, which he wanted. And Ferrari offered him everything he wanted and more. What are your thoughts, PJ? Well, there's also a report that Lewis is getting paid $100 million That's correct. from Ferrari. 80, so million, Lewis- 80 million in salary and $20 million in performance uh Bonuses. bonuses. Mm-hmm. So not only is he getting a crap ton of money from Ferrari, he's also getting um, his diversity and inclusion projects. Ferrari's actually going to honor those. So like he's he's getting everything he wanted from Mercedes and more money. And he's getting so, that ambassadorship. No so when he retires, he's going to be an ambassador uh, for Ferrari. They're going to help him have his own brand like a la Michael Jordan where Michael Jordan is making more money from away from basketball with Nike than he did when he was playing and I that's why I think this whole thing is short-sighted by Mercedes and the reason why I say that is look at Michael Jordan he's making more money for Nike than when he was playing when Michael Jordan has a shoe, people are lined up around the block to get the new issued of the shoe. When Lewis Hamilton said he was going to Ferrari, even though they had a stock announcement that day that um, that they had, you know, they're announcing their earnings. That was only about four to five percent from all reports. The other five to six percent came from Lewis alone. So on that day, it's been reported. I I say doing the numbers because I, I I can do math. Unlike a lot of these pundits out there, it brought in four billion. Some people are saying it brought in as high as eleven. I say it's four, but let's say it's five. Okay, let's just say it's five, and let's say that their earnings announcement brought in three. And just Lewis brought in two. Well, two billion dollars in one day. Well, that one billion dollars paid for the whole Lewis contract and probably paid for the whole ambassadorship in one day. What do you think, PJ? Yeah, Lewis not only is, you know, the most probably, you know, the most recognizable Formula One driver of all the time, he's also like his yeah, he's yeah. a brand and like he, he, like you said, he's he's bigger than Formula One because he has these other things, other projects he's worked on, like fashion and music. So he he's a brand, and because you know he joined Ferrari, investors immediately like saw that as a positive, and then their stock price just skyrocketed. You think it went up on Friday? Wait till Lewis is announced with Charles Leclerc in red. With the red car behind him, what a new livery, people's minds are going to explode. They're going to explode. And it's going to, you just don't know how people, people, listen, listen. You don't know the power of Lewis Hamilton. You just saw it. His dog, Roscoe now has a million followers. It's more than a lot of Formula One drivers have. His dog. Did you know that, PJ? Roscoe has a million followers? <laughs> that Roscoe got a million followers. No, that's, that's crazy. His dog has a million followers. But they're trying to say that Lewis Hamilton's not bigger than Formula One. Here's my conspiracy before we move on and talk more about this contract and talk more about 
Lewis going to Ferrari. Here's my conspiracy theory. Remember the day before? This was Friday when the announcement was made. On Thursday, on the internet, Formula One, specifically the FIA, was getting killed. Why? Because they had turned down Andretti. Not only did they turn down Andretti, but they had the gall to insult the Andretti brand. Do you know how big Andretti is in motorsports, PJ? Yes, they're a very successful team and organization. You know, they have tons of success in IndyCar and other racing series. So they they definitely would bring. They kept. They said that they wouldn't bring competition to the grid, but they don't know what they're talking about. They would definitely be competitive. They can't say anything when Haas is still on the grid, and they just you know wander around in last place like half the time. And Alpha, Alpha's doing horrible. I mean, what, what? What? And they had Manor in there. They had they had they had Catrum in there. Give me a break. How are you going to turn down? Not only are you turning down Andretti, but you're turning down Cadillac, which means you're turning down General Motors, the biggest car company in the world. So you're not. So you're telling me that they're not. Right now, as we speak, building a factory in Indianapolis, you're telling me that that Andretti is not going to bring something to Formula One? You know, and I'm going to share with our audience a little insider knowledge here. It really came down to who was providing the engine. And they also said that they thought that Andretti would get more cachet from joining Formula One than vice versa. So it's the engine provider. And if Cadillac or GM can provide an engine for Andretti and to other members of the grid, it has to do with the OEM. It has to do with the engine. It has to do with that. And if it's only if Cadillac is only providing an engine for Andretti, then that's what they're not interested in. They want Cadillac or GM to be able to provide an engine, just like back in the old days with Ford, to have multiple teams use that engine. So there's a little bit more to it. Go ahead, PJ. That's absolute bullshit because Honda is doing a works engine deal with Aston Martin to only give them their motors, nobody else. You see how they they spin everything, right? I mean, they don't know what it really comes down to. It really comes down to Mercedes, Red Bull, and Ferrari don't want to share a piece of the Formula One pie. That's one. I mean, mean, but they're bringing in Audi, you know, but another conspiracy. And I'll just, I know I shouldn't go on with this. I really think Mercedes is going to go back to, you know, they're going to go back to a midfield team. I really do. I really think they're going to go back to midfield. It seems like the board of directors, the way that they're headed from all the little things that they say, they don't want to be in Formula One anymore. And I could see Andretti buying the Mercedes team. That way they can get into Formula One. What do you think about that one? I think that Andretti's going to buy Haas because Gene Haas is already like barely interested in this team anymore. He's like, doesn't want to invest his own money. He's just fired, like, you know, the most the most like, charismatic and funny team principal on the grid, even though he wasn't very good. He still provided, actually, like, money to, like, drive to survive and their entertainment value. So he, he's, like, barely wants that team anymore. I think he just said sell it to Andretti, and, and Andretti can actually bring that team up and not just be last on the grid all the time. I would love that because I don't think I I agree with you 100 percent. I don't think Haas spends enough money. Um, They they're treating it more. I mean, it is a business. We all know that you have to make money, but I don't think they're infusing enough money into the team and getting to the cap. We know they're they're probably well under the cap. The cap's 140 million. I think it's going to go up a little bit this year. But if you're only spending 80, 85 million when Mercedes, Red Bull and Ferrari and Aston Martin are spending all 140, then you're at a deficit. We all know millions of dollars make a difference. That's another part. That's more wings. That's more tires. That's more 
rear wings, that's more floors, that's that's more everything. Better personnel, better engineers. And speaking of engineers, one of the other reasons why one Sir Lewis Hamilton went to Ferrari is Ferrari's first order of business when Fred Vasseur uh, was taken over and in his plan, he took Louis Serra, who was the development vehicle development engineer for Mercedes. He took that him and he took him to Ferrari. Now, this same Louis Serra was also the engineer that Hamilton worked really close with and had the same ideas and concepts for the 2023 car and they were lockstep and barrel with Lewis Hamilton together about getting rid of the side pods, about moving the cockpit up more where Lewis is more comfortable and about other some other designs. And they told Lewis no. And so since Lewis, Sarah and Lewis Hamilton were on the same page and now he's at Ferrari, some people are saying, well, that's another reason why he's going to Ferrari. Did you hear about that one, PJ? I did not, but I, well, I did hear a little bit about how Fred has been hiring engineers from all over the place, including Mercedes. But I also heard that uh, Bono or Bono will join Lewis at Ferrari. It's a rumor going around. When Schumacher left to go to Ferrari, engineers came out the woodwork to go to Ferrari to work with them. When Lewis left McLaren, people left McLaren to go work with Lewis. When big names leave, people, engineers and other people in the garages, they leave because they have a relationship with that driver and they also know that leaving with that driver, one, they'll get a raise, two, they'll probably be more high profile because as Lewis goes, as goes Formula One, as goes the internet, the internet exploded on Friday. I mean, people who were leaving Formula One now are jazzed about Formula One again. People who are upset with Max winning every race and Red Bull winning every race are now talking about Formula One. Everyone's talking about Formula One. Even in soccer, uh, English football, they were talking about it's the transfer season and Friday was the last day of transfer for uh, English football. And one of the big proponents for English football, he even talked about transfer and he made a joke of it. And everybody was like, well, who are they getting? And he said, well, Lewis Hamilton already went to Ferrari. So, so even in the sport of soccer, they're talking about Lewis Hamilton. PJ? That's crazy. Yeah. Um, it's really storming over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super rainy outside right now. Like, just crazy wind. But yeah, like, I remember, I remember the night, the night before, like, it was official. There was this, like, endless posts about like, Oh my God, sky sports posted it early. And like, it's all confirmed. I was like, nah, I can't be real. I, I didn't want to believe it for like, until Ferrari posted it themselves or Mercedes posted themselves. Cause I, you know, I'm a Carlos science fan. So like for me, it was hard to swallow at first, but like as long as Carlos gets a seat elsewhere, I'm fine. But also I'm happy for Lewis because this is like the Schumacher type move you want to do and i think that him going there will actually improve the team because ferrari's biggest issue is that their personnel doesn't know what the fuck they're doing and then lewis's <laughs> people know. kill him kill him go get him pj yeah and then lewis's people they're very professional and know what they're doing so they could really improve that team from the inside that's 100 percent the reason why, and let's let's dive into. I mean, the Ferrari personnel. A lot of times they hire from within. You know, there's a lot of, um, which is great. You know, Ferrari is Italian, so they hire a lot of Italians. Which is, I hate my wife's Italian. I love Italians. Okay, okay. But let's take the best, and that's what I like. What Fred Vasseur is doing. Let's take the best engineers, no matter where they're from. 
no matter what language they speak, no matter who they are, we are here to win. And if we're here to win, we got to go out and get the best. So I like this change. I like, I'm starting to like Fred. I already liked him before because he's been around F1 for a very long time. I, I, I like his leadership style. He just seems like a very fun guy to be around. And him and Lewis have known each other for quite some time. If Bono goes and we can get, and if we can get some new, <laughs> some new guys on the pit wall and some new guys in the pit for Ferrari, you know, because we all know some of their strategy decisions are just, I mean, you just, it's your mind scratching. PJ, you remember when they told Carlos Sainz in uh, the Vegas race, they told him, hey, you sh- you sh- the car's overheating. You're going to have to park the car. You're going to have to park the car. And Carlos was like, I'm not parking the car. The car's, well, it'll be fine as soon as I get in clean air. Or when they told him, why are you backing the field up? You need to speed up. You need to speed up. No, I'm, I know what I'm doing. I'm doing this so I can win the race so that he ba- the number two backs up number three who are on the Mercedes who are on fresh mediums who have the capacity to pass me. I know what I'm doing. So when your driver's telling the st- and leading the strategy, which that's why another reason I love Carlos Sainz, and he is one of my favorite drivers like like you, PJ. And I think he's really, I, I don't think he's underrated. I think people appreciate how good a driver he is, but I think he doesn't get his just desserts. He, he doesn't. He, he's like, for me, when he had that like amazing patch of three races, like, you know, Zanvoort, Monza, Singapore, because the setup was the setup on the car was was actually like focused towards him for those three races. We really got to see his true talent, his true pace. Like he has like top tier pace, but then combine that with like way better like intelligence and strategy than most drivers. He's very very dangerous driver if you actually get him the right car. I think so. Um, also, some other reasons why. Let's add more reasons why Lewis probably left. Well. Two times last year, they didn't even show up for the podium for Lewis. Remember earlier in the year, um, he was celebrating with Ferrari and Aston Martin because supposedly, I think this was a Spanish Grand Prix, supposedly somebody, uh, some fans had broken into some of the garages and were stealing. Like they had actually stole a bunch of F2 uh, memorabilia and stuff out of the garages. And so... That's where, the, that's what, Louis, you know, Mercedes' spin was. Well, everybody was out back at the garage trying to keep everything safe. But everybody who's been in the paddock knows, and if you've been to the pit, you know, it's just a pull down, man. One person can pull down the chain for the garage. And you might need a couple other people to get, you know, some of the stuff that they have on the outside of the garage. But you don't need the entire team. Total Wolf is not down there moving equipment, you know. So give me a break. So some you, the the person who does marketing, the person who does the spokesperson, you know, walks around with Lewis and they stand by the PR person. They're not hankering down everything in the garage. So somebody could have been there, and two times nobody was there for Lewis. And on on one occasion, he was like, "Well, where the f is everybody? Where's my team?" And I could see he was bothered by that. Also, in Singapore, when George crashed, they were all talking about, oh, well, George could have won this race. And this race was about George. George this, George that. But they forgot that Lewis finished third. He was the one who actually finished on the podium. What are they doing talking about George so much? Talk about the guy who's winning. Talk about the guy who had the pace to win the race if George would have moved out of the damn way. Don't get me fired up on this stuff, PJ. I think that George is a big factor in Lewis leaving. I think that we saw that George and him had their moments this last season, like in uh, Qatar. They, you know, crashed into each other and just, they just, they they crashed into each other multiple times this season. George likes to always say, oh, we're going to, are we going to fight or we're going to actually like go for the team play? Like, right. He's just, they're, they're starting to clash. They were starting to, you know, butt heads, and Lewis does not want a Rossberg situation again. So he's just like, I'm out. I agree with that. Hey, you're on fire today, bro. 
I agree with that one too because he went through the Nico Eric Rosberg years from childhood friends to bitter enemies. And probably now at this point, they're just cordial, but they're not the best of friends anymore. And wait till that book comes out about all the things that happened behind the scenes back then to go from friends to like saying, oh, he's not my friend. He didn't want to go through that anymore. And when they asked him who was his favorite teammate of all time out of all the teammates that Lewis has had, you know, he said Valtteri. Because he said, well, it was no games. And Lewis doesn't want, and George is probably playing games because he thinks with only one race win to his name, somehow he thinks he's a world champion. You're not, George. You're not. You've only won one race. Give me a break. You got lots to prove. And he's probably like, hey, man, really? These guys are listening to this guy? Really? These guys are uh, putting their their cart behind this horse after all I've done for them? It's always about respect, man. People just don't realize how much respecting somebody go, respecting a man, you know, you get out of that. Like sometimes people only need a thank you and a shown of respect, you know, especially athletes. And you show that respect by obviously money, but you show that respect by listening to their advice because he's the one driving the car. Exactly, but I also think that George like is very like overrated personally because like yes. he he like you know beat Lewis in twenty twenty two. Everyone's like, oh my god, look at how amazing he is. And Lewis had like a very tough year. He was also testing all the different setups that year, and that's why he finished behind. He finished behind even Carlos Sainz that year, but um. I feel like if they if Mercedes hires science to go to Mercedes, that he's gonna science will beat Russell, in my opinion. Science will beat Russell if they bring uh, Fernando to the car. Fernando's gonna beat Russell. Uh, I heard a rumor that they might bring Vettel back. Um, they got to bring a big name. Yeah. I, I think that the, either it's gonna be Science, Albon, Fernando, or Ocon. That's that's my prediction. I don't, out of all the, well, they have to make a big splash. So I, that's why I don't think it's going to be Ocon. He, he, that, there's no name cachet there. There's not a big splash. It's Mercedes brand. Um, you're going to lose, one, you're going to lose a lot of fans. One, you're going to lose a lot of merchandise sales. One, when your tweets go out from George Russell, you, you're not getting nowhere near the traction that Lewis Hamilton's getting. So, well, I mean, no, nobody does. But at least if you brought back Vettel, if you did Alonzo or Carlos Sainz, at least you got some respectability. If you bring Ocon and even Albon, I, I like Albon, but even if you bring either one of those guys, it's not a big enough name. And you got to replace a big name with a, at least somewhat big name. If you go down the tiers, and I like Alex. Alex is a I, I like Alex, but he's never won a race yet. Um, and you, you just have to, I think you have to bring Vettel back or you have to go after Alonzo or you have to bring Carlos to the, to the team. I, I think Vettel would be a very big risk because even when it was like in his Aston Martin days, he was not who he was at like Ferrari or Red Bull. And he's been out of the sport now for two seasons. So he would just, he'd be extremely rusty um, Albon is another big risk because we don't know what he's going to be like under pressure again because at Red Bull, he, he crumbled under pressure like extremely hard. And then he's had no pressure on him at Williams. He can just go there and just perform as best, you know, as best he can without pressure. And then Fernando is always a good option because he's never, he's always putting in a hundred percent. He's got pace. He's extremely talented. And then science, same thing. He's, you know, extremely intelligent and he's extremely talented so that's my opinion on the different drive oh yeah Alcon Alcon's got pace but he like you said he has no he's not marketable you know like he, he doesn't have the fan base that like the other drivers have no not at all and he's I just don't I just ugh. you know I mean I I'm a Gasly fan I like Gasly 
immensely more than Ocon. I just don't. I and I, I got the chance to meet Esteban over in Japan. I just, I mean, you know, obviously he's a good driver. He won a he won a race, so he's won a Formula One race, which not many people on the grid can say. Not many people who have been in Formula One can say. There's a lot of people. I mean, look at Nico Hulkenberg. He's never even been on the podium. And I like him. I love Nico. I just wish he would have got an opportunity to be on a top team. But you could go your whole career, never win a Formula One race. So he does have that going for him. But he also has just flashes of just extreme stupidity on the <laughs> on the racetrack. And I don't think... You want that in your, I guess if he went, he'd be the second driver and George would obviously be the first driver. But I even question George leading a team all by himself and being the face of your franchise, so to speak. I, I think, I just, I just don't, I just think he's too Eric for me. That's just, just, just me. Just, I'm, I'm just speaking for me. I'm not speaking for the fans or Mercedes or anybody, not even for you. I would try to get Alonzo at all costs. I think you could only replace uh, a multiple champion with another multiple champion if you still want to be in Formula One and you still want to be relevant. If not, you have to go out Carl after Carl. What I think, here's a better thing. You know, in transfers like baseball, basketball, football, they do the trades and it's right now. It's boom, you're traded. So the next day, you're playing for that team. They've done that in other seasons where I think when um, I think it was when Vettel was going to Aston Martin, they let him out of Ferrari like three or four races early. Remember? And he went to Aston Martin and started racing to get used for the next season. I think they should tear up both contracts and they should swap. Lewis should come to Ferrari and Carlos should go to Mercedes and they should do it now. Before the season starts, they haven't even shown the cars yet. Ferrari hasn't unveiled their car with their livery. Mercedes hasn't unveiled their car with their livery. They should do it right now. Get get it done. Take the Band-Aid off. Pull it off. Let's go. What do you think about that? That... that, Okay, Carlos staying at Ferrari this season and Lewis staying at Mercedes this season also, like, provides a scenario where Ferrari looks like idiots because, like, if Carlos beats Charles this year, they're going to look like the biggest clowns on the grid, but they already are. So it doesn't make a difference, but um, like they're going to look like an idiot, like idiots. They, you know, they gave Charles this monster contract extension and they just totally, you know, sidelined Carlos. But if he beats Charles this year, they're going to look like, Oh, we signed the wrong driver. So therein lies another thing that, that, Another reason why they should do the transfer now. 